All right, we're here with Matt Lano. The day before the California International Marathon, how do we feel? I feel, legs are feeling good, as they say. Yeah, I ran New York a month ago, um, and I feel better now than I did going into New York. So hopefully that's a good sign for tomorrow morning. How do you bounce back in a month coming off of one marathon and immediately preparing for another? I think my approach to this one, or these two, was just a little bit different this time around. I think every other time I've gone into a marathon, I've just always thought, you know, there's only the one goal and anything after that, you know, I don't even think about until down the line. In this one, you know, six months ago, I had the idea to run both. So I think knowing that coming into it just helped change the framing in my mind a little bit. And then uh, the training the last four weeks, you know, I took a good week, just really easy running after New York. My body felt pretty good. It wasn't too sore. I think that weather in New York prevented us from running that fast. And so it didn't feel like it took a ton out of me. Um, and then I got back into running for the last three weeks and just, you know, focus more on the workouts than I did on the volume that I was doing before. Um, and just hope that, and know that all the volume from the last six months will carry me through on Sunday instead of having to think I needed it in the last three weeks. What's the longest run you do, just for some perspective, the longest run in that month period that you went on? In the last month? Yeah. Probably, uh, I think the longest one I did was 19 miles. I did get a, you know, a decent long run back up there, but it was only one time um, two weeks ago. So it was two weeks after New York and two weeks before this one. So it kind of fell right in the middle. Um, just wanted to touch a little bit on marathon pace at the longer distance, uh, at least one time in there. And then everything else has been kind of shorter, um, you know, other than that one, probably maybe 16 miles is the longest workout that I've done. So uh, we'll see if it pays off tomorrow, but uh, it's been fun the last couple of weeks to be able to take a little bit of the pressure off that I had going into New York, um, not having to focus on as many miles and, you know, just the fatigue that accumulates with general marathon training usually. In 2018, you had a really great race here. You took it from the front, got caught just at the last second. Are we expecting something similar strategy-wise? <laughs> uh, not this year, I don't think. Uh, yeah, 2018 was, I came into that race wanting to break 210. I ran 210 for, I don't know, 20 miles, and then the wheels kind of fell off. Um, I thought I was going to be able to hold on, but I got caught with, I think, 400 to go. So still kind of a, a bruise in my memory for that one. but. Uh, no, this year I'm hoping that we'll have a big group. It sounds like a bunch of people are going to try to go for that, maybe the course record 210-27. Um, so it'd be fun to just latch onto that group and just have a bunch of people working together for as long as we can. Um, and then it just becomes a dogfight those last couple of miles, see who's, whose legs can hold on the longest. For the shooters out there, you know, we saw the success that Sharon had in her Under Armour shoes at New York. Are you wearing something similar? Yeah, Jacob Thompson and I will be wearing very similar shoes to what Sharon wore in New York. So. We know that you know it's a it's a great shoe that has great potential for at least work for Sharon. So uh, no reason it shouldn't be able to work for us too. And we've been training in it the last six or eight months, racing it a handful of times, um, and feel like it's coming along really well. So we're excited to feel like we have you know an equal playing field in that regard uh, going into the morning's race. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you.